ladies and gentlemen, will talk on his talk. <laughs> Sorry, I was unprepared. I realized we're coming up so fast. Howdy. So today, I want to talk a little bit about how to work on docs that are really hard to write and that actually don't fit, I don't know, um, all of our procedural models or whatever. And that, you know, and how to do things where your processes and whatnot don't get into your way. So, is it going to respond to that? Maybe not. So, a little bit about me. I've been tech writing for 16 years. I worked for a company in Prague called NetBeams for a little while. It got bought by Sun Microsystems, and Sun got bought by Oracle. And so I've been working on various things, some open source, some not so open source. Okay, so what's the thing that I really want to talk about today? Well, I'll just read right off the slide. As technical writers, we don't give ourselves enough space to make our writing engaging. That we, you know, we have all these rules to do things so that stuff is logical, so it's scannable, um, so that people can find stuff. But some of the difficult things that we have to write about we don't really find ways to do that in a way that's really going to capture people. We might give them a good procedure, but we might not actually explain why you're doing that procedure in a way that makes sense. So, as I just said, what I'm not going to talk about is how to write the perfect step procedure. I'm not going to talk about marketing content either. I'm really talking about technical stuff that people can engage with. So, um, and part of what I mean by this is that you can write something that's completely logical, factually perfect, succinct, and then someone has to read it 12 times to understand what the heck's going on. And so, so I'm looking at something like this. Um, and this is a, a, a topic that we've been working on internally, and actually we've tossed it away for various reasons. But it, um, and you probably can't see it that well now, but. Um, what I will say about it is we're talking about OAuth, this authentication framework, and we're talking about all these abstract roles, and we give a little diagram that shows how it works, and it's still mumbo-jumbo to me. And so, you know, as I was doing research on it, I found something on a website called Zapier.com that actually breaks things down um, in a way that's, that's lovely. I mean, first of all, you've got these little diagrams that take you step by step. You're learning conceptually as you're going along, not being forced to look at this one diagram and you know figure out where to start and remember where you were. And this is, goes on longer than this, but basically it gives you a wonderful flow, gives you a wonderful example with a human example of um, having um, a pizza coupon that um, is used when you're authenticating with some service. So. Anyway, um, you know, and when you look at some of these articles out there, and you know, some really good writers are out there producing these things, you know, the, the question is, you know, I can't do that. And I ask back, so why? Why can't we do that? And on the answer is, eh, we get things like this. And you know, and I, and I buy these explanations to a certain point, um, um, but I think that they're overstated. And I think that there's um, something that we can do about that. Harder problems are things like this. Um, first of all, writing something super engaging on a really technical topic is really hard. I mean, first of all, you've got to understand the thing, and I think that, um, raise your hand if you've never written a doc that um, you did, where you completely, where you didn't actually understand the technology. <laughs> really, you've so you've never written a doc where you totally didn't get what was going on. Yeah, 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 sorry. Anyway, I mean, um, I mean that, that's a reality we face, and I mean, I find that my, the first version of docs, I go back to them, like, oh, God, that's, that's horrible. Um, but, you know, so, so that's real. Um, and taking the time to get it right is real as well. But I think there's some things we can do. Uh, and I've got a few addressable problems. Take them one by one. First one. I think that we just simply have too many rules um, internally, you know, for ourselves, for our processes, whatever. They're just rules about how we're supposed to do things, how we're supposed to construct certain sort of headings, the way we're supposed to order topics, all sorts of stuff. We've got lots of these things, and um, and then you know we might have templates to um, kind of reinforce these things. And I think that actually this. 
you know, these are designed to help us, but they end up being a hindrance. Here's another one. Uh, so uh, I think that, you know, in the process of writing, um, we actually find ourselves deferring to the product too much. It's like we're trying to paint a picture of the product, and that's not necessarily what people are really interested in. I mean, they want to know about it, they want to know their interaction with it, but they don't want to necessarily know the complete picture, which leads us to this one. Uh, you know, we're not actually focusing enough, you know, we, okay, royal we here. Maybe I'm not focusing enough on, um, on reader problems. You know, and I think this ends up, you know, it's kind of a natural byproduct of our process. You know, we've always got to be fighting against this. And then I kind of alluded to this earlier. I don't think, um, you know, when we're talking about writing in our companies, at conferences even, we're not actually talking enough about um, the difficult job of writing really well. You know, we're, we talk about, you know, again, things like how to construct a coherent procedure. But we don't necessarily talk about how to make your paragraphs um, coherent um, and, you know, and flowing. And, and we don't talk about how to make things kind of a pleasure to read. And again, this might not matter for a procedure, but it really does matter if you're trying to explain something to someone that might be new to them. And what they're trying to understand, you know, the why of something, not just like, okay, how do I you know, change the setting? So uh, um, let's take these one by one. Okay, too many writing rules. Um, I think one of the first things that you can do is simply audit your rules. And, you know, and these can be all sorts of rules, um, you know, um, stylistic rules, you know, um, things that you do um, formatting wise or whatever. And the most important part of this is figure out what's a rule and what's a guideline. You know, um, you might have um, documents that are over 100 pages, and you might have tons of internal web pages where it's like, you must do this. You got to do this right. You got to do that right. And I get the feeling that in a lot of cases, these things weren't created in that spirit. They were created in the spirit of like, oh, in order to solve this problem, you know, construct your paragraph like that. But we're treating them all as rules, so it gets, gets a little bit overwhelming. So here's how I'm going to break it down. Um, rules are necessary for the brand. Um, that basically the company, um, you're going to reflect poorly on the company, on the product or whatever, if you break this rule. And there should be a lot of things, right? I mean, there should be some, um, but not, you know, I would say this would be under 10% of the things that you're working with. And guidelines are there to help you write better. And, um, and you need to take them that way. It's not a rule, it's, you know, you're not forced to lead all of your um, topics a certain way. You're not supposed, um, you're forced to order everything every way. You're just, um, just looking at these and figure out, figuring out what you can mine from them. So that leads to the next thing. Make sure you actually understand the function of the, the rules and guidelines, because sometimes if you're sort of following them, you might have actually lost the spirit of them. And, um, you know, and I, I think for me this is the kicker. You know, if, if guidelines are inhibiting you, then you're probably not using them correctly. And you're applying them in a way that actually just doesn't make sense for your content. So, um, these are, I, I don't know, I'm gonna reinforce those ideas with this. Remember, form follows function. And, and I think when we're working with templates and other things, we're locked into the form and we're wedging in the function. And that's really not the way writing is supposed to be. And I think another thing, people look at consistency as, you know, kind of a holy grail. I think consistency is incredibly important, but it's not a holy grail. It's just one of many values that make your doc set more usable. So quickly, um, here is something that, um, actually this is years ago. I did this when working on the NetBeans documentation. And this is just some sort of um, stylistic help. Um, you know, we ha had a team that suddenly was producing a bunch of tutorials for the website. And we basically needed to get some standards to um, get things to cohere and to you know look like a real doc set. And our discussions were you know were around oh my god we got to do this we got to do this we got to do this and it became like this very heavy-handed discussion and we had a lot of work to do. So what I tried to do is break it down to the essentials and there are basically seven rules here and then links for other rules that you know support people given other use cases they have and and that was pretty much it. And so with that, we ended up something, you know, with tutorials that basically looked like this, where 
Um, you see in the, in the right side, there's this little badge that actually shows, okay, what versions um, that this tutorial applies to. Um, you know, a standard table looks the same on each page. You know, uh, a simple table of contents. But we kept it very simple, yet the tutorials actually really had a really good brand to them. And, and this has pretty much worked to this day, you know, and this was pretty much seat of the pants. So um, I don't have a bunch of time left, and the next two areas are, um, are probably not as important to address because I think they're pretty much obvious. Um, so first of all, remember, don't treat your product as a temple. It's, you know, something you're writing about, but you're trying to cover the interaction between the reader and the product. Um, but be aware of the fact that, you know, when you're writing, you know, even though you think you're thinking about the user all the time, there's this gravitational pull of the product based on your processes. You know, you're dealing with engineers and writing about a feature, and it's kind of easy to get sucked into, you know, um, um, deep diving into the logic of the product and kind of losing your contact with the actual reader of your docs. Um, and again, um, the focus on the reader, this is, um, I, I don't have too much to say here, I think everybody knows this stuff, but one of my pet peeves is, um, don't use the word document, as a, don't use it as a verb, because when you document, what are you documenting? You're writing stuff about the product, you're not documenting an interaction, you're not writing to somebody, you're writing about something. So, um, um, again, th these two points are obvious, you know, user goals, and think, think in terms of stories. Um, I'm not going to linger on this page, but this is just sort of a list of things that, um, that might be clues that you're a little bit too product-centric and not enough where you're focused. And if you want me to expand on any of these, after the talk, obviously. And, okay, this is a little pet peeve of mine. I feel like we talk about the user all the time, and I feel like we talk about the user in a way that the user itself is an abstraction, has been melded into the architecture of our product. So, like, watch yourself when you're doing that. Like, what are you really talking about when you're talking about the user? And, and I actually say, it's like, we give the user insistent lip service, but then we just talk about the product. So, um, the last one is just simply, um, how do we um, address better writing? And just, we need to spend time on it. And remember, accuracy and grammar are just prerequisites. Um, when you're writing, think about how readers absorb information, you know, um, so doing something ultimate, you know, very succinct might not be the way to do it. You know, and remember, the goal is an economy of words. It's reducing the time the reader spends on the page, which might be pure words, it might not be. And just some, what I'll call, stray exhortations. Um, remember, um, I, I think what happens to a lot of us is that we compose in our content management system, which actually sort of puts us in a little box and you know, kind of makes us think about the way we want to compose, but actually sets limits from the get-go that we shouldn't be doing. So write outside of your content management system or your authoring tools or whatever. Um, you know, and don't think writing directly in it's going to save you time. Because if you're doing the docs you really want to write, well, it's going to be a few drafts anyway. You know, it's not like write once and you're done. Um, you're not saving yourself a lot of time and you might actually be um, doing something that inhibits what you want to do. Next one, blog. If you've ever had the chance to do this, this is actually where you bring the reader back. You really are talking to someone. You've got your face on the blog, you've got an audience, there are comments. This actually brings home um, how to talk to readers. And, and then the last one um, is I think, you know, a lot of times we have the check boxes for what needs to be covered when we're doing doc planning. Question that, you know, um, it's like, do we have to write about this feature? Um, is there a story involved with this feature that I can cover? Deal with it that way. You're not writing about the feature, you're, you're writing the story that's relevant for this feature. So where's that in this? Um, again, do some house cleaning on your rules and guidelines. You know, figure out what's, what you keep, what's really important, and what's less important. Um, this is mostly about mindset and attitude. I haven't given you any tools or anything like that. It's really just memory that um, think about what actually really matters and what really contributes to quality docs. Um, and, you know, I kind of alluded to this before, you know, subject matter expert input is often implementation oriented. You know, push back where, where, where needed and don't be shy about doing that. And then the last one, spend time on the craft of writing. I think that's um, the thing that we take for granted 
and we could do a lot more of. So that's it. Thanks. These lost mics are amazing. <laughs> so we are only five minutes behind now. This is we, this is fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna try and catch up. So five minute break, everyone. <laughs>